quest for excellence is on. From every corner of Britain, 60 bakeries selected by experts to battle it out. Let me cut it, please, before I show him. Please, let me cut it. Are you feeling the pressure, Nick? This will blow their socks off. Setting their sights on the ultimate accolade to be crowned Britain's best. Rafa, Rafa, pray, pray. Winning the competition would be the icing on the cake for me. Absolutely. This is where the pressure kicks in. Six weeks of tough challenges will see bakers pushed to their limits. I'm absolutely petrified. Ah. Some will rise. Something's getting excited here. B-E-A, beautiful. Others will fall. Boo. We've got a disaster on our hands. Look, stop, stop. Just one will take the title of Britain's best bakery. <laughs> on the hunt for Britain's best bakery, our expert judges. Mitch Turner, whose cake-making expertise has earned her an MBE, and Peter Sidwell, award-winning chef and artisan baker. Together, they will expect every bakery to push themselves and their bakes to the limit. Britain's best bakery has got to be passionate and innovative. I'm looking for a bakery that's got real technical ability and that instinctive flair that delivers consistency day in, day out. This week, Mitch and Peter are in Derbyshire, where they've set up a judging HQ at a cookery school in the grounds of the Catton Hall estate. Here, they'll be putting bakeries from Wales and central England through a series of tough challenges. Today's three bakeries are from South and West Wales. From the Welsh capital Cardiff to the hundreds of miles of glorious coastline, this is a region renowned for bakes such as Barabreeth or speckled bread, a rich fruit loaf made with tea. All three of today's bakeries have their hearts set on winning a place in Friday's regional final. The judging HQ, first to arrive, is the Welsh bakery from Haverford West. I'm quite excited. We are very good bakers and, uh, yeah, traditional is best. They're competing against absolute treats from Carmarthen. We want to do our very best to make sure that we sell ourselves well and don't sell ourselves short. And from Cardiff, today's final competitors, Coco Rico Patisserie. Been a, a, a bit of a roller coaster the last few days. I think I'm more excited than nervous now that we're here. Later, our teams will go head to head in the judges' HQ kitchen. But first, they have a chance to show off what they do best. Can I just try one for sample? Mitch and Peter are convinced that at the heart of every successful bakery, there's one outstanding bake that defines who they are. The speciality bake should be the one product that the bakeries are most proud of. And the product that gets me beat in a path right to their door. Today... bakeries have chosen their quintessential bake for the judges to taste. In the first challenge, the speciality bake. First to face the judges, the Welsh bakery. I <laughs> just don't knock it. I'm not going to. <laughs> Set near to Britain's only coastal national park, Haverford West in Pembrokeshire is home to a long standing family bakery. Bakery. Yeah. This traditional bakery has been going for over 30 years, and in charge is Brian, a third-generation baker, and his son, Rob. We've been together now for about 20 years, so uh, he loves it, he loves it. No major incidents have yet, but still time. With years of experience behind them, they run two shops, a market stall, and employ 20.
five staff, selling a mixture of both traditional and artisan bakes. Hello. Do you have any low GI bread? Yeah, we've got the, only got the smalls left. You come in the morning, there's nothing made. And then out of like raw ingredients, put them together with a bit of knowledge, and uh, you create beautiful things. I think we can win the competition, Brian. Yeah. yeah. Between us, 70 years of experience. Yes, yeah. We're Welsh. You know, we don't like to lose. No pressure. <laughs> if we don't win, we'll blame the judges. <laughs> this looks like a real harvest festival. The attention to detail on your bread. So it must have taken you hours. Uh, a few hours. Yeah, a few hours of uh, hard work and concentration. Tell us today, what is your speciality bake? Our dragon bread. It's got uh, chilies, coriander and coconut milk. Why have you put this bread forward as your speciality bake? Dragon is Wales and that's what we wanted to push as much as possible. And is this the absolute very best product in your bakery? I believe it's one of our most unique. It's the red dragon, emblazoned on the Welsh flag, that's inspired them to conjure up this fiery bread. Made with coconut milk, chilli and coriander. Looks a bit like a dragon, that's the idea, and it feels a bit like a dragon. Yeah, and you'll be breathing like a dragon after you tried it. This red hot loaf starts with white flour, yeast, and salt. Dragon bread was uh, dreamt up by my wife. She comes up with weird and wonderful ideas. We list through every word, as you do with your wife. And the dry ingredients are combined with coconut milk and water. It's uh, a lovely bread, very spicy. Don't tell the judges. And now for the star of the show. Sure, we need all these, isn't it? Chili and lots of it. So we get the fire in the belly. And fresh coriander too. When all the ingredients are well combined, the dough is left to prove. Wakey, wakey, dragon. Then it's split into portions and left to rise for about half an hour. Nighty night, dragon. Before being transformed into dragons, with scores for scales. There's definitely a wow factor, like. Ooh. Well, the judges don't. Like this, I sure have something to remember anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, boy. And dragons just love heat, so it's into a hot oven for 20 minutes. There be dragons. Yep. So will this fire-breathing bread set the judges alight? Or will it be shot down in flames? It's got a very brown bottom. It's supposed to be like that. It's the richest of the coconut milk, I think. You know, right, so, OK. Yeah. Mm. Oh, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> that has got quite a pokey, chilly aroma. Ooh, that's where it came. Uh, yeah. Right at the end. Mm. It's well seasoned which is nice. It's got that salt in it that it needs. The chilli's not as hot as I was expecting it to be. This has been technically very well made. I like the texture and I very much like the concept. Wonderful. So thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. Quite good, some of the remarks they made, and uh, it seemed to go down very well. It had a story, it had a theme. Absolutely delivered on all the elements I was looking for. Flavour, iconic and really tasty. A red-hot start for the patriotic Welsh bakery. Next to face the judges, it's absolute treats from Carmarthen. Not too far apart, then. Carmarthen is the oldest town in Wales, but it's not a place set in its ways because it's embraced this unusual vegetarian bakery. Welcome to Absolute Treats. Mother and daughter team, Virginia and Jen, make cakes and bakes with a difference. The ethos behind the bakery is vegetarian and a high percentage of vegan produce. They don't use any meat in their bakery and believe bakes made without dairy, such as eggs, milk or butter, are every bit as good. The fact that it's made with a certain type of ingredients is relevant to us, but not relevant to the eater. They sell from a small shop in the town's old clock tower. That my usual, I yep. have that one. But everything is baked at home. Ah, there we are. The majority of the time, this is my kitchen, my home. But when we're cooking, it's our business as well. So what will Mitch and Peter make of their vegetarian and vegan bakes? You've managed to inject a huge amount of colour and texture in all the different elements. Thank you, that's what we try to do. Please tell us what absolute treats you have presented for your speciality bake. A chocolate, raspberry and almond brownie. And this is vegan? Yes. So there's no butter? 
and no eggs. Is this ultimately Head & Shoulders stand out the best product in your bakery? I think it's the most popular. Stuffed with raspberries and topped with almonds, this is Absolute Treats vegan take on the classic chocolate brownie. They start with the dry ingredients, flour, almonds, sugar, and instead of vegan chocolate, they opt for cocoa powder to give that chocolatey hit. It's a, an original recipe that we've come up with ourselves. In place of butter, they add soya milk and vegetable oil, and for some extra flavour, vanilla extract. I mean, most people can tell they taste different. We don't aim to make the cakes taste like dairy cakes. They're just supposed to taste like nice cakes. A punnet full of raspberries are poured into the bake. The raspberries add some of the goo that you would normally have in a brownie, um, but it would normally come from melting chocolate. And once everything is combined, Jen adds extra raspberries and tops off with flaked almonds. Then it's baked for 20 minutes. The customers just can't get enough of it. One of them described it as being dangerously delicious. Will the judges feel the danger? Well, let's experience this absolute treat. It's not got that lingering, dark, intense flavour that you might normally get with a brownie. It's quite shy on the raspberries, but they add a wonderful burst of flavour when you do come across them. But I have to say, for me, it does not have anywhere near enough kick in the chocolate to really be delivering a memorable speciality chocolate brownie. I'm surprised that they thought there wasn't enough raspberries in because there was a whole punnet in there, <laughs> wasn't there? It didn't have a chocolate oomph to it at all. It kind of felt like a school dinner chocolate sponge. So their vegan chocolate brownie lacked a chocolate intensity. Can French patisserie Cocorico impress? <laughs> Cardiff Place hosts to some 80 million visitors every year. And for those seeking a slice of France in the Welsh capital, there's this patisserie. Bienvenue à Cocorico. Owner Lorian was born, bred and trained in France. From a very young age, he knew that baking was what he wanted to do. I knew uh, when I was five years old, I went, I went for a school trip to the local bakery and as I come out, I just knew I was going to be a pastry chef. And he's been serving the good folk of Wales all the French classics since opening the bakery three years ago. See the customers who come in for the first time. You can see the sparkle in their eyes looking at the cakes and thinking, I want everything. Pastry chef Bex is fired up by the idea of joining him in the competition. <laughs> it's very difficult to be more passionate than uh, Lorian, but I am very passionate about what I do. With his wife expecting, Lorian's hoping another young baker will be following in his footsteps soon. How's the baby? The baby's still kicking. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> My hope is, you know, to pass it on to the next generation if, if it's possible. No pressure on a kid. <laughs> he is very competitive and definitely winning is something that he'd lo love to get to do. Your table's looking a little sparse. The closing time. We got a really exciting time for me. Uh, my wife is due, so we kind of uh, rushed a bit the last few days, and uh, that's why we don't have any uh, other bakes. Wow, yeah. you have got a lot on your plate. I do, yeah. Well, not on this one, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we did remember to bring the specialty bake. So. Well, that, that's something. <laughs> yes. This is a, is a milk for you. Is this milk for you truly representative of your bakery? This is what people come every day for it. Who's chosen this as your speciality bake? You or the customers? I did, because it's my favourite. This meal foy is a decadent patisserie treat with rich vanilla custard sandwiched between layers of buttery puff pastry. Lauren does make the best meal foy in town, I think. I think my meal foy is good. It's actually really good. Lorian's meal foy starts with the mix for the pastry. Is the butter ready or...? He combines flour, melted butter, water and salt. I got told that it was by the milk and you can see the, the patisserie uh, level, so that's why I choose this one. And more butter is incorporated into the dough. A meal foy means a thousand leaves, referring to the layers of pastry, 
you got to get all the layers right so when you fold it and then you can get all equal 1459 layers Lorian rolls out his puff pastry dusts with icing sugar and weights it down so it won't puff too much when it's baked and whilst it's in the oven he starts the custard filling with fresh vanilla and everything it gives a, a good flavor to it one more Quick, one more to complete the custard Lorian adds egg yolks to sugar and corn flour which are whisked into hot milk until it thickens that's perfect let's put it in the fridge cool. Yeah, spot on. With the pastry ready, he constructs this patisserie favourite. Finished with fondant icing and chocolate. Hey, voilà. Perfect. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. I think the judge is going to love it, because until they tried our meal food, they haven't tried a proper meal food. Lorian is happy to blow his own trumpet. But will it hit the right notes with the judges? You have feathered it beautifully on the top with the chocolate and the fondant. And I can see all the layers of puff pastry that have really crisped up. The pastry gives a wonderful contrast with that very rich vanilla custard in there. It's not light and fluffy with a bite, it's slightly more chewy which I actually really like. And the fondant icing on the top just gives it that real sort of sweetness to it. I'm just not sure that this Milfoy sums up your bakery. I was quite pleased with the reaction, yeah, it was quite a positive response. I think it's still all to be won. I think we're lucky that he remembered to bring the Milfoy with him today. I think we're lucky he's here. <laughs> it was technically very well executed, but there was no personality mm. in the Milfoy that really helped me identify it as being his product. Coco Rico Patisserie's Milfoy was well baked, but short on character. Absolute Treats Brownie was no treat, but the Welsh bakery's dragon bread burnt through the competition. But things could still change when the bakery's creativity is put to the test with the wild card bake. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites sponsored by Febreze. It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack Searching for a moonbeam in the blue Still I've got to find you
refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. Today, the gloves are off as three Welsh bakeries fight it out for a place in the Wales and Central England regional final at this week's Judging HQ in Derbyshire. And things are about to get a whole lot tougher with the wild card bake. Each bakery must dream up a bake using an ingredient and method chosen by the judges. Today, the ingredient is coconut and the method is rich short crust pastry. Well, there are lots of ways you can incorporate coconut, whether it's desiccated, whether it's fresh, whether mm. it's from coconut milk. The rich short crust pastry and coconut represent a good combination mm. that these guys can really work with. This is not a timed challenge, but the judges will be on the lookout for ingenuity and creative flair. Father and son traditionalists Rob and Brian at the Welsh Bakery are toying with the idea of a creamy fruity tart. They're hoping their 70 years of combined baking experience will see them through. Things can go wrong, but obviously uh, our knowledge of what we do uh, definitely helps. To a mixture of flour, butter, sugar and shortening, Brian adds eggs, the ingredient that makes short crust pastry rich. He wants to get his pastry as short as possible, but he knows there's a fine line between super short and just plain crumbly. If it was too crumbly, you wouldn't be able to work, work with it. I think I'm right in there now. I think done well there. Eh? After chilling in the fridge for 30 minutes, it's ready to roll out. So gently does it. Try not to break it. Ooh. Oh, oh, no. But they've done exactly what they were hoping not to and made it too short. Ah. Again. It's, it's too short. There's no quick fix for a crumbly pastry unless you have a backup batch. To get things rolling, we use the, a batch that I mixed up before, and, well, like you can see, now it's a bit more success. We're OK. Happy with their backup, it's blind baked. And they turn their attention to the filling. I think, yeah, the mixture between the mango and the coconut should go together quite nicely, shouldn't it? Yeah. Brian and Rob hope a mango paste will work perfectly as the first layer in their tart. Do the custard on it. Custard? Yeah. For the second layer, they make a custard using coconut milk. Slower, slower, slower. How do you like them scrambled? Poached, boiled? Uh, this is a good one. It's thickening, isn't it? It is coming. Yeah. yeah. And add another hit of the key ingredient by mixing in desiccated coconut. Very good. They layer their tropical tart with the mango paste. Nice and smooth, that, isn't it? Followed by the rich coconutty custard. Beautiful. And to top it all off, toasted coconut, fresh mango, white chocolate, and a sprinkle of lime zest. Very pretty. Mm. It's a nice balance, really. Mm. We'll retire on that. The Welsh bakery are confident their tropical coconut custard and mango flan will set them up for an easy life. But will the judges agree? Is this product completely new to your bakery? Completely. Right. Have this experienced father and son team got the right balance of flavours? I can see the pastry on the back there has been baked wonderfully crisp. The custard topped with cream sort of delivers a really light element to the tart itself. The pastry is quite thick, it's not as rich and as buttery as I was expecting. I do like the mango that's in there. It gives a real fruitiness. I just think maybe the ratios need tweaking a little to make sure that coconut was the dominant flavour profile. Perhaps not as positive as we had for the dragon bread, but uh, overall I'd say reasonably happy with it. I did like the fresh mango. I wasn't expecting something quite so tropical mm. to come from the Welsh bakery. I'm not so sure they showed a massive amount of innovation in this challenge. I think they played it a little bit safe, to be honest. Mitch and Peter didn't see enough creativity in the Welsh bakery's offering. Can mother and daughter duo from vegetarian bakery Absolute Treats do better? They're experimenting with a chocolate and coconut tart. The challenges for us are to make the richness in the pastry without using a lot of things that a traditional pastry chef would use in there. 
Instead of the butter and eggs usually found in a rich shortcrust pastry, Virginia uses dairy-free margarine and soya milk. And keen to get the key ingredient into every element of this bake, she adds desiccated coconut to the pastry. After chilling, they roll out their pastry. Have a little look, it's nice and smooth now. Shape it into cases. Jen's the expert at putting the pastry into the tin. And bake it to stop a soggy bottom. Time for the filling. They've dreamt up a ganache with a difference, using vegan chocolate and coconut oil to infuse even more flavour. But that's not all. Now it's time for our unique secret ingredient. Yep. Usually, a ganache will be made with cream, but this is a vegan recipe, so Jen and Virginia need dairy alternatives. They're trying avocado for texture. We hope to be able to present things to the judges that look familiar, but come from different ingredients. It's really creamy. With their pastry cases out of the oven, Very nice. better bake than the yeah. last time. And not a soggy bottom in sight, it's time to get them filled. That is lovely. That's as high as I want it, lovely. And topped off with desiccated coconut. The tarts are full of ganache, but do they have enough panache? It's really rich. Is it? Mm. I think with the, with the pastry base itself, but I think regarding the chocolate, we just need to tweak that a little bit more and make it just a little bit more decadent. In their final version, Absolute Treats replace the avocado with cream of coconut for texture and extra flavour. But will their vegan chocolate ganache tart with a lime and coconut pastry be a winning formula? When you received this challenge, what were your first thoughts? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do here? Let's have a look. Why, oh, so nice. Even bake on that pastry. Looks nice and short. There you go. Thank you. It's a good half. That chocolate really does deliver a good depth of flavour. I'm getting a subtle aftertaste of the coconut, which is really nice. Given that you've made a rich short crust pastry with no butter and no eggs, I think technically it's delivered a very sound pastry case. All in all, it's a lovely combination of flavours. By incorporating coconut in lots of different mediums has shown real creativity, so well done. Okay. We're really pleased with the judges' comments about uh, the depth of flavours and the fact that they could get the coconut coming through. I'm glad it gave that deep, dark, bitter chocolate flavour. And I thought the pastry, for not having eggs and butter, mm. was actually very technically well delivered. Absolute treats have won praise for ingenuity. It's time for the final bakery's wildcard bake. At Coco Rico Patisserie in Cardiff, Lorian and Bex are experimenting with a chocolate mousse on a short crust pastry base. I don't know if they'll be expecting um, our interpretation of the brief. What's going to stand out about it is the texture as well as the flavour. OK, let's crack on. French-trained patissier Lorian is trying out a radical idea with his rich, short crust pastry. This is a cardamom. It's a, the unique twist we put into the pastry. Not enough would be pointless. Too much would be a disaster. Cardamom is an aromatic spice more common in curries than desserts. What do you think? Is that enough? Yeah, I think so. Good. We'll find out. It could be an overpowering flavour, but he's willing to take a gamble. I quite often take risk in, uh, in, in flavours that I use. Lorian shapes his cardamom pastry into neat discs. There you go. Oh. That's good to bake. Cool. Now for what Lorian hopes will be the pièce de résistance, a creamy coconut mousse. He makes an Italian meringue by adding sugar that has been heated to exactly 118 degrees Celsius to egg whites. This is my first attempt, but then... Uh... Until I get it right, I'm just going to keep on going. He finishes it off with lime, cream, coconut milk and gelatine to make it set and cocoa nibs, the raw form of chocolate. This is a sauté slash. Everything combined together should actually get something quite unique. Oh, wow. With the mousse set, they need to work out how to present the finished article. I think I prefer the dose one. 
brings out a little bit more the coconut out of it. Yeah. Instead of this one, it looks a bit too chocolatey. So less is more. And how about the spice? There's not enough cardamom in it. I think uh, we're just going to have to up it a little bit so you can taste it through the base. For the final version, Lorian has added a lime pastille and a layer of chocolate praline to his tropical coconut clouds on cardamom pastry discs. But will his experimental flavours be too bold for the judges? Is this a product that would sit in your bakery quite happily? Yeah, that's the kind of thing we do. I love the fact that all the layers are identifiable. I can see the rich short crust pastry, which has snapped really cleanly, and then that light and fluffy coconut mousse on the top. The biscuit has a wonderful crispness to it, and the mousse is really light. Incorporating such strong flavors as cardamom and lime have really overpowered the coconut in the mousse. The mousse is like cloud, it just kind of disappears as you taste it and technically that is absolutely wonderful. The judge enjoyed the, the textures and all the technicality uh, we put in, in, into the cake. The coconut mousse was light as air. The one little bit that maybe let them down was the flavour. Albeit they delivered flavours and they really did, they weren't the flavours that we asked for to be the, the dominant one. Coco Rico's patisserie showed technical creativity, but fell short on coconut flavour. Absolute Treat's vegan take on a coconut and chocolate tart went down a storm. But the Welsh bakery didn't show enough innovation for the judges' liking. So with everything still to play for, the teams must battle it out for pole position. In the final task of the day, the Baker's Dozen Challenge. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. That cuppa. That call. That invite. That walk. That text. Each year, one in four of us will experience mental health problems. And sometimes, it's the little things that make a big difference. It's time to talk. It's time to change. Turner. You're our kind of person. You're not satisfied until the customer's satisfied. No job is too big or too tough. If anyone's giving extra, it's you, Linda. And at Halifax, we think people who give extra should get extra back from their bank. That's why we give you £100 cash back when you switch your current account to us. Linda, you deserve it. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The judging HQ in Derbyshire may look like a peaceful setting, but in the kitchen, the pressure is mounting. Three bakeries from South and West Wales have one last chance to secure a place in Friday's regional final. It's time for today's ultimate challenge, the Baker's Dozen. 
In an unfamiliar kitchen, with their every move scrutinized by the judges, the three bakeries have just two hours to produce a baker's dozen of the judge's choice. Can I just put that alongside? Today's challenge, calzoni. Similar to a pasty, this folded pizza is a popular Italian street food that's thought to have originated in Naples. It requires the bakeries to make a perfect pizza dough and fill it with their choice of tomatoes, mozzarella and their own freshly made pesto. Each must make 13 calzones and present 13 to the judges. We're looking for quality and consistency. Bakeries, if you are ready, get baking. 700 water. They're all following the same recipe, but have brought their own ingredients. This is a really good challenge. Beautiful combination of flavours that just melt inside an absolutely perfectly crisp calzone bread dough. First task for all the bakeries, the pizza dough. With a place in the regional final at stake, father and son duo Brian and Rob from the Patriotic Welsh Bakery know they need to step up their game after they delivered an uninspired wild card bake. Seasoned bread bakers, they make their dough in a mixer, adding salt, sugar and yeast to flour before pouring in warm water and olive oil. I'm going to stick the ovens on, Bri. Right on. Over at Coca Rico, French patissier Lorian also uses a mixer to make his pizza dough. Trying to execute it uh, as, as uh, well as possible so you get you see then we can follow the recipe and making it maybe better than the others. Used correctly, a mixer is a quick and easy way to ensure that the dough is needed to the light, stretchy texture that's required. But over at Vegetarian Bakery Absolute Treats, Virginia is doing it the old-fashioned way. I'm sure the machines are fine, but I'm not familiar with it, so I'm going to stick with my hands. <laughs> Kneading the dough by hand takes more time and effort to get it to the right consistency. And the judges aren't convinced that Virginia has kneaded her dough enough. Pass me your bread dough. Let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> Don't make it feel bad. Bring it here. Please. Please. Don't. Oh, no. Don't poke it. No. What I'm trying to do is gauge how much gluten you've managed to yeah. get in here. And I'm just, if I stretch it... We need some more, perhaps? It's a very tight dough. Um. Gluten gives bread its structure and is developed during the kneading and proving process. And bread expert Peter knows what a good dough should look like. Look, you can see how flexible and stretchy this dough is. Look at that. That is a good-looking dough. And what you want to be able to do is knead it with either very little or no flour at all. Because the more flour you add to this, the more it will dry out. Having underwhelmed the judges with their speciality brownies, Virginia and daughter Jen can't afford to produce a less-than-perfect pizza dough. Oh, for goodness sake, Jen. <laughs> so they embark on a rescue mission and put it in the mixer. We've got it, we've got it. But concerned that they're not improving things, they take the dough out again. This is definitely not for me, machinery. <laughs> we might be fighting a losing battle here. <laughs> In desperation, Virginia adds even more flour to the already dense dough, and it hasn't gone unnoticed. She's put it in the mixer mm. and has now taken it back out and is kneading it with more flour. Can I jump in and do it for her? <laughs> The dough must be left to prove until it's doubled in size, so it's on to the filling. There are over 7,500 varieties of tomatoes, and whilst Virginia and Jen have opted for the classic salad tomato, the Welsh bakery have chosen a blend of both salad and sweet-flavoured cherry tomatoes. The judges criticise Coca Rico's wildcard bake for lacking in coconut flavour. So Lorian and Bex know that this bake has got to taste spectacular. They've chosen several old-fashioned varieties of tomatoes, which they're roasting off first. What have you got roasting in the oven? We've got some tomatoes roasting in the oven. 
What sort of tomatoes have you chosen? We've got a selection of uh, old uh, type of tomatoes. You mean old tomatoes as in heritage tomatoes, heritage not tomatoes. old tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. Thanks for that. I was kind of thinking these old shriveled up yeah. tomatoes, eh? <laughs> They've got a wonderful combination of heritage tomatoes. They've then roasted them at slow heat to really intensify the flavour by getting rid of the moisture. Those ones, from a taste point of view, are sounding really good. The recipe also calls for the bakeries to make their own pesto. Both Coco Rico and the Welsh bakery add basil, dry roasted pine nuts, Cheese boss, can you? olive oil, garlic and parmesan. Smelling fantastic. Yeah, it smells gorgeous. Have you tasted it yet? I'm about to taste it now. What are you looking for? That. <laughs> At Vegetarian Bakery Absolute Treats, they're following the same pesto recipe. But because Parmesan contains rennet, a product sourced from young calves, Virginia and Jen have had to find an alternative. So we've managed to source um, a vegetarian parmesan style cheese and uh, I don't know what the flavour's like because I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> it's good. With no time to waste, the teams start to fill their calzones. At Coco Rico, French patissier Lorian and his pastry chef Bex lay a mozzarella on roasted heritage tomatoes before drizzling over pesto. But the judges are concerned that they're skimping on filling. You think you're putting enough filling in? You don't want to overfill it, because otherwise it's going to burst out. It's better to be just uh, on the safe side than uh, keeping it all in. Happy with their filling, Coca Rico are first to get their calzones in the oven. Good. Not far behind them, traditionalists the Welsh bakery brush their pizza dough with homemade pesto before adding fresh cherry tomatoes and buffalo mozzarella. You're doing plenty there. Yeah. They're going to be chunky monkeys. But they've been too generous, and it's caused a calzone catastrophe. Be careful. The dough's ripped. We've got problems because we've got so much filling. This yeah. is what's happening. You're going right to the edge. OK. And the judges have spotted the problem too. Ripping through some of the pastry, you might notice in the corner, some of the tomatoes are pushing oh, yeah. through the pastry. That's just starting to burst through, isn't it? Yeah. Have you not got a plan of action? Of course, fingers. The father and son team will need more than just crossed fingers. Right, we'll do some good repair jobs. But they press on with a smile. Uh, there might be a redeeming factor against the uh, tomatoes fighting through the sides. And get their bakes into the oven. But at Vegetarian Bakery Absolute Treats, Mum, Virginia and daughter Jen are running behind. It's risen. <laughs> it's, it's not risen as much as we would like. They've no other option than to go ahead and fill their calzones before finishing with a coating of vegan pesto. Hopefully it will be just as good. Three, that's fine. Bakeries, you have 15 minutes left. Come on then, got to get them in now. Yes, I'm trying to. Worried that they won't get 13 calzones baked in time, all they can do now is turn up the oven. Turned it up to 220, which I would normally wouldn't do because I'd be worried that it's going to burn. But because we have next to no time left, then I've got to do it to hope that they cook in time. It's just going to be a little bit close for baking, I think. You can crack it up to 225, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> the fresh is on. We just have to wait and see how they come out. Bakeries, that's it. Stop baking. Three very different bakeries, each with their own take on a calzone. There wasn't any more time to be made, unfortunately. Coming out quite nicely, so I'm quite pleased with it. I wish the sweat's off now. Is it? <laughs> three tough challenges complete, and three bakeries determined to win. Now it's down to the judges to decide which will make it through to the regional final. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourite, sponsored by Febreze. Bill here just saved £304 on his car insurance at Money Supermarket and now feels so good he thinks he can run with wolves. There are no wolves in Croydon. Malcolm, today's a good day. Let's run.
98% of people could save with us and feel as free as Bill. Bill, you're so money supermarket. This January, the story of Waitrose.com. Imagine the ideal online delivery service. It would have Waitrose partners carefully handpicking your shopping. It would match the price of its branded grocery products with Tesco every week, excluding promotions. It would have wonderful Waitrose food, and with a My Waitrose card, hundreds of savings across the store. Now, imagine all this delivered to your door by Waitrose Partners for free. There's only one Waitrose.com. It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack, searching for a moonbeam in the blue. Still, I've got to find you. It's just like looking for a needle in a haystack. Still, I'll follow every little clue. For I've got to find you. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The South and West Wales heat of Britain's best bakery is about to reach a dramatic climax as three bakeries face the judges for the last time. All are vying for a place in Friday's Wales and Central England regional final. And there's nowhere to hide with their baker's dozen about to be scrutinized. A calzone filled with mozzarella, tomato, and fresh pesto. To give them moral support, they're joined by family and fans. But only one team will go through to the next round. And it's up to expert judges Mitch and Peter to make that decision. First under the spotlight, vegetarian bakery Absolute Treats from Carmarthen. Their chocolate and raspberry brownie failed to pack enough punch. But their wildcard bake delivered a perfect pastry and a rich coconut flavor. Can they deliver again with their veggie calzone? The first thing I notice is we do have a baker's dozen of calzone. Slight variation in the bake, but that's really more about the crust itself. Some of them are slightly darker. They struggled with their pizza dough. Have they managed to perfect it? I'm delighted you took the dough and reworked it to get to this wonderful soft texture that we're looking for in a calzone. The pesto's got a really good flavour about it. Slightly salty with the cheese, which is good, but I think the dough is, is slightly undercooked. And I think an extra ten minutes to really bake these off would have made all the difference. Next to face the judges, father and son traditionalists from the Welsh bakery. The judges love their speciality baked dragon bread, but felt they played it too safe with their wild card bake. They had to do a last minute repair job when their generously filled calzone split. But will a winning smile save the day? I've never had a calzone smile at me before. No. We do have a baker's dozen, slight variation. Yeah. Let's taste. Beautiful bread dough, packed full of filling. The bread dough is lovely. It's slightly chewy. It's got a very thin crust on the top, and then it's got a nice crimp all the way around. And I love the fact that you've decorated your calzone to give them that little cheeky smile. Finally, French patisserie Coca Rico. The judges thought their milfoy lacked character, but were wowed by the coconut creativity they showcased in the wildcard bake. They roasted heritage tomatoes for a richer flavour, but have they skimped on filling? We do have a baker's dozen. Slight variation on the colour. The 
bake and the crimping. That is a lovely light dough. The flavour is really intense with the tomatoes because you chose to roast them first, which has really ramped up the flavour and intensified them. Not a massive amount of mozzarella in there. It seems to be all about the tomatoes in this. It's a great dough, but it's quite shy on the filling. There's quite a lot of space around there, and I'd have liked to see a little bit more in terms of the cheese, the mozzarella inside. The bakers have given their all, but there can be only one winner. And it's up to Mitch and Peter to make that decision. To do that, they must take into account all of today's bakes. I think all three bakeries produced very tasty calzones. So whilst the bakers must endure the wait, their supporters get a reward for their loyalty. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, you've done a good job even once well done. Absolute Treats showed an inexperience with their technical ability in this calzone, but they more than made up for that in taste. And they actually produced very uniform in shape and appearance, albeit a few of them were slightly darker than the other. Considering they have a restricted range of ingredients, mm. I think they've delivered some fantastic flavours. They extract an element of something and then they replicate it in their style. That makes a great bakery. But even though it didn't work out quite as we wanted, we did get an achievement at the end of the day and we were quite pleased with that, weren't we? What I did like was the fact that the Welsh bakery had overloaded the centre of the calzone with Elaine. And I think they created a wonderful flavour in the middle and they produced a really good sound bread dough. They showed wonderful technical ability, but a real creativity with mm. their Welsh dragon bread. That really distinctive, iconic product that really represents their bakery. Just here to enjoy ourselves and do our best. Yeah. I thought Coca Rico Bakery achieved a really light, stretchy dough that had actually really sort of risen and sponged up in the oven as it baked. My concern was that the filling inside was not uniform across the bake and was quite skinny on the filling. Mm with their wild card bake. They showed wonderful creativity, attention to detail, and a refinement that absolutely nails them in their bakery. I'm really happy with what we've done today, so I think we'll get a chance of winning. For me, there's one bakery today that has showed technical ability. They've shown vision and creativity, and I'm really excited to see what more they can do in the competition. I think we're agreed. Yeah, definitely. Should we go and tell them? Yeah. There can only be one bakery that goes through to the regional final for Central England and Wales. And today, that bakery is... The Welsh Bakery. <laughs> Can you rather believe it? Yeah. <laughs> very, very happy and very surprised. We're looking forward to it, though, aren't we? Yeah. You have shown some real technical wizardry in there. We've done what, what we do the best, and those guys are great. We can see that you are going to progress. You're not standing still as a bakery. I think the winners today were really disappointed. I think well, they did really well. I mean, their experience showed, and their products were very well made. You, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't fault them on that. I'm impressed too, but I would say that when I. <laughs> I genuinely feel like we are going to get a real part of Wales in our regional finals now. They have shown a wonderful flair today and I'm really excited to see what more they can do. They've embraced every challenge that we've set for them today. They're up for this competition. Just want them to refine it a little bit for the regional finals. Okay! Next time, the competition hits the West Midlands and the marches. A traditional baker finds himself in a sticky situation with his caramel. It's split. How are you feeling, John? A lot more under pressure now. A bread baking brother and sister find pastry poses a problem. Guys, what's happened? Got a bit burnt when we blind baked them. And a house husband turned baker feels the heat. We're going to run out of time now. As the search continues for Britain's best bakery.